Today we're at Forest Fannings. It's another piece of our tour from Tinley. And we're doing a little thing he does just before Tinley, he does a barbecue. So he invited us over because he's good friends with us. Uh, don't ask him if he is or not because, you know, he's good friends with me and uh, might be one-sided. Just kidding. So stay tuned and we'll show you some cool animals that we saw there as, and as well as all the other people that are there. Four questions. Ready? So what's your name? <laughs> uh, Scott Smith. Uh, or Tiny, depending on where you know me from. Uh, I run the All Animal Expo game just outside of Chicago. Alright, and where are you from? Uh, that's where you live outside of <laughs> Chicago? <laughs> yeah. Currently? Elburn, Illinois, yes. Elburn, alright. And what makes you passionate about the hobby? Or what's your big passion? I'm an animal guy, and I love when a kid finds the animal this meant for him. That spark of excitement, and they just they can't contain themselves. That's it. That's what keeps me going. I got you. Absolutely. All right. And the last question: If you could uh, grow your hair like Brian Barczyk, would you? <sighs> no, I got a problem with gray. You can see it too easily. <laughs> that happens. To all of us. That's really not a long. I actually <laughs> tried to get him to do a bet with me on a hockey game about cutting the hair off, and he wouldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's passionate about the funny power. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's all about the hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. All right, thanks. Anytime. One of my focuses and passions from the beginning has always been uh, arboreals. And most of the stuff we keep are arboreal tree dwelling reptiles. And uh, here we have a captive born and bred Corallus caninus, a emerald tree boa. And uh, she's usually a uh, puppy tame, but at night these guys can be a little different. Um, but this is from the Miss Willie line. It's produced by Rico Walder of Signal Herpticulture. And uh, he passed away, but his bloodlines of uh, green trees and emeralds have lived on. And uh, we're super, super happy to, uh, to be working with them. So we've got uh, eight pairs of, of these guys that are all captive born. And uh, most of them are signal herb. So we're pretty excited to uh, be working with and uh, trying to breed these guys. This one's a designer one. And uh, you're really looking for uh, for these uh, bands on them, these connecting bands. You want to, you want to see a lot of white and uh, the least amount of gray possible on the neck. So you know they're selectively bred for for looks and uh, also just really healthy quality animals. There's a huge difference in uh, in captive born and uh, and uh, wild caught emeralds. You know wild caught emeralds almost never survive. They always have. Uh, chronic regurgitation syndrome caused by cryptosporidium and different gastro gastrointestinal issues and uh, they just fail to thrive. So, um, you know, having the chance to reproduce and uh, and get some more healthy captive born ones out there is, uh, is awesome as well as, you know, like I said, they're produced from somebody who was a great mentor to me and the entire green tree, python and emerald tree boa community. So. We're pretty focused on that, I would say. They're, yeah. they're top priority for us. And then uh, here's a uh, really special male uh, blue green tree python, the blue jaya. He's uh, kind of going into shed, but you can still yeah. get the uh, it's amazing point. So yeah. You yeah. have uh, an incredible collection Thank of you. the aborals, and it's just such a pleasure and an honor to, to be able to be here and to check it all out. So. Mm -hmm. Definitely appreciate you taking the time for us. Yeah, anytime, man. Yeah, it's cool. It's just kind of like, like, yeah, you guys came. <laughs> well, you're gonna stay. Yeah, just, just kind of something stay. we'll do forever, I guess. Just every. No, no, I mean, like time. throughout the year, we'll just take it. Yeah, no, anytime. We like Steven. Yeah, we. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Set. Yep. We're doing four questions. So what's your name? Chantel. All right, Chantel, where are you from? California, Southern California. Uh, what are you passionate about? Like what gives you, what gets you up every day? Um, well, I've run my own business for nine, almost 10 years. So that's, that's my main frame, which is health insurance, life insurance. But 
as far as reptiles and animals, um, I really like monitor lizards the most. Monitor lizards, that's cool. All right, and now the fourth question, which is the random question. You know, if you had a beard like this, what would you do to keep it nice and straight? Oh, okay. Because I have like, you braid, braid it. it. Who's that? Braid it, that's a good idea. Yeah. That's good. To keep it tame? I've yeah. been telling you that for years, braid it. <laughs> You're a good Viking. Do you have the you got the oil and the comb? I got I blow dry it every day. Oh my and gosh! I, and I know I have to keep it straight. I brush it. You do why? Let it go wild. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, if it went wild, it gets like it gets like crazy. Yeah. Like yeah. Like it curls up into my mouth. Yeah. And I can't talk to people. Do you store your leftovers in there? No, I keep it real clean, so you can you can smell it. No. So this is Brian Gundy from Goodness Snakes. For Goodness Snakes. For Goodness Snakes. All right, so we just heard some pretty disturbing news. You had some snakes, you know, like stolen. Right. Which right. is, you know, one of the breeders' big fears is somebody would come in and take animals and stuff like that, which you would know would have to be somebody that knows something about animals because just a regular thief wouldn't come in and go, oh, look, let me steal some and probably stole some really good snakes, you know. So Actually, it was totally different than that. They didn't yeah. come into my facility at all. Oh, they did. I was I had just finished doing a reptile presentation, an educational presentation okay. at a library in San Jose, California. Okay. And I had was uh, bringing basically my gear and my animals back to the parking garage where okay. I had my car parked. And I saw where my car was and I thought, you know, I'd already walked about a city block with all this stuff and I'm not right. the biggest guy, so I just thought, you know, I'll just drop my stuff off here. I can see yeah. my car. I'm sure, sure it's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And I went to my car, backed up my car, uh, saw four or five people kind of walking around where I had dropped off my stuff and didn't think anything of it and drove over to where my stuff was, uh, went to pick up my gear and immediately noticed that the duffel bag that I had my four snakes and a blue tongue skink, a lizard, uh, yeah. in there was gone. So I ran downstairs thinking, okay, these people that I had just seen might still be around because it's yeah. just seconds. Sure. And ran downstairs, went to the street, looked over, you know, all over the street, went into a couple of restaurants, couldn't find it. And, uh, but, you know, I just wanted to say that, the, you know, that it was just, and I had no thought of this, but it's just amazing how this has brought the herb community together because I have not ever had as many phone calls, as many text messages. Oh, we're so sorry. We hope you get blah blah. You know that thing. Yeah. You get the animals back. We've already gotten three animals back. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Within days, somebody that's evidently must have found them in a dumpster. Uh, a local PetSmart called me and said, "Hey, wow. we think we have your animals." And uh, they sent me. They texted me some photos, and sure enough, and uh, wow. yeah, it's just been that's an uh, you know, it's been an amazing experience. Not just from the standpoint of having the animals stolen from me, which is something that's never happened. To me. Yeah. to where now I'm just enjoying the um, experience of how this is bringing the whole group community together. And I'm getting emails and text messages from all over the world. Wow. And they're hearing about this. You know? yeah, yeah. I got a text message or a phone call the other day from somebody in Wisconsin that said they had heard about it in their local newspaper. <laughs> so crazy. this That's is really, as, as bad yeah. as it seems to me, it's an opportunity for us to really reach out to the to the non-herp community and to see yeah. and for them to see, um, yeah. you know, what we do and why we do it. You know? wow. But yeah. yeah, it's just been a crazy experience. Yeah, yeah, I definitely think. I mean, there's times when uh, some tragedy happens and a lot of people have negative things to say about the herp community, but they <laughs> come together. Are you kidding me? Yeah, this they has do been come together. An unbelievable experience. Yeah. I am totally humbled by the response and uh, yeah. It's just, so there is this several silver lining even in the you know the tragedy or whatever yeah. you know yeah man that's awesome yeah but stinky situation but you know still is turning out for the good I guess sure and, yeah and it's just good. I'm amazing how you know it's turning out in a positive way sure that's great all right so I'm gonna ask you four questions <laughs> so four questions sure so go that's for our it. four question bit here that we're doing all right so what's your name Ryan Gundy all right and where are you from Campbell California. Campbell, California, with For Goodness Snakes. For Goodness Snakes, right. Yep. All right, and what are you passionate about? Uh, 
you name it, animals in general, uh, I'm an animal guy. If I can pick it up and touch it, that's what yeah. I want to do. Okay. I'm out herping all the time. I'm pick, you know, just pick up everything I find. <laughs> uh, from a project standpoint of with my facility or my collection, you know, I would say the Pied Clown project is really yeah. where I'm focused. Pied Clowns are cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I have three yeah. of them at home. I produced all of them from double heads that I raised up That's for great. seven years. That's it great. It took me yeah. seven years. To, seven years. To See produce. that? Yeah. We and now I have, all the time. Sure. And it's, you know, and now I have the opportunity to produce triple heads. Uh, you know, Pied Clown and um, Ultramel is yeah. one of my thoughts. And I'm just now wondering if it's... Uh, you know, if it's something I really want to do, or because to produce triple heads, then I'm going to have to wait another six oh, yeah. years or so. Brian wants to do that. <laughs> to produce triple simple recessive, you know, gene trait. Yeah, yeah. So wouldn't that be very cool? But oh, yeah, awesome. I, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. But Mark. that, yeah, the project side of things, it's really the uh, the pie cloud project. Pie clouds are cool. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Um, all right, so the fourth question. Uh, if Garrett Hartle were to ask you to sleep on your couch for a month, would you let him? Of course. He's a good guy. I love him. <laughs> he is him. a good guy. Yeah, I just spent <laughs> three I just spent two days at his house. Oh yeah. So <laughs> sure he can come over anytime. <laughs> <laughs> See that? You got a place now. It's great. <laughs> oh All yeah, right. Garrett's great. Yeah. Caymans, and uh, you always have some awesome Caymans. You have a bunch of crocodilians, but I just I like Caymans. I think they're really cool. So tell us a little about what you got going on, as well as, uh, as some conservation you were talking about. Okay. Um, yeah, we have uh, four of the five species of Cayman. The one we don't have is black Cayman. Um, this is the broad-snouted Cayman, Cayman laterostris. Uh, the facility that I work with, I'm, I'm vice president of Dragonwood Conservancy. I've been volunteering there since. I was, you know, 19 or 20, mm -hmm. um, so over a decade, and uh, they had some of the, I, I don't know if they were the first to produce some, I think uh, Bronx Zoo was, mm -hmm. um, and then Bronx Zoo gave them some, so uh, this one is from uh, from two different Bronx Zoo bloodlines, uh, Molly and Buster are their names, they're still producing, um, and uh, yeah, they're just, they're, they're an incredible Cayman, you know, they're very beautiful colors. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's it's definitely a, a privilege to be able to to keep these animals up here. Um, we've got ten species of crocodilians here, and the main purpose of them is is for education. So when they need to do an event up here, whether it be a Comic Con, been doing those, um, you know, school program, and then like Tinley Park. When you see these animals at Tinley Park, you know, it's because we're keeping them up here and we take them there. So uh, yeah, and and, and the um, the purpose of Dragonwood Conservancy has been, you know, establishing them in captivity, working with different zoos, researchers. Um, you know, it's a great place for it down in Florida, uh, where you know so many of the uh, academic people are down there. They can go there and do uh, do all kinds of studies and stuff. So, yeah, it's uh, it's it's absolutely incredible, man. I love them. I think they're really fun. Like, <laughs> they're fun. Yeah, they're yeah. Yeah, with with. With crocodilians, people always think smaller, yeah. safer. No, yeah, not so much. Not necessarily. <laughs> yeah. Not necessarily. I mean, none of them are are safe, but uh, yeah, they've you know, they get, like I always like to say, old man strength. You know, if you yeah. see a an adult uh, caiman, you know, dwarf caiman or something, the the power and the strength that that animal has at that small size is uh, is nothing to mess with. These small caiman have insane neck mobility. You compare them to some of the larger crocodilian species, uh, which is, you know, another thing that makes them even more dangerous, too. One day when I'm not in New Jersey, I will own some. <laughs> yeah, you know, everybody yeah, says that, and, and I always say, just don't do it. Just go to the zoo and <laughs> check them out. And have fun, because yeah. there are a lot of you, uh, Yeah, it, it sounds fun, and then all of a sudden you have them, and, and it's a really serious commitment. I mean, if you have a life plan for them, and it's something you know you're you're really dedicated to, and, and you understand. But but definitely spend some time with people that are doing it and learn mm -hmm. as much as you can. And yeah, you don't have to own it all. You can. It's, it's like what they say with venomous. It's like the best ones to work with are somebody else's. You know. Yeah. yeah. Hey. So all right. Four questions. What's your name? Desiree Minot Fanning. 
not fan angles, right? <laughs> and where are you from? Uh, originally from South Dakota and currently reside in Indianapolis, Indiana, running Cold Blooded Cafe and Reptech. Cold Blooded Cafe and Reptech? Yes. So you're Forrest Fanning's wife? Yes. There you go, to make the connection. <laughs> Alright, and so what's something that you're passionate about? Um, well, I'm very passionate in our animals, all of them. They're all amazing. Um, but my most passionate thing lately is um, becoming a mom. So uh, I got a six month old baby. And I'm very passionate about being a mother at the moment. So. All right. And okay, so the one random question uh, if you didn't marry Forrest, would I have a shot? Like, that... <laughs> of course. The great face. Of course. <laughs> what? So you're saying there's a chance. So you're saying there's a chance. Uh, thanks. Thanks for joining us, guys. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell. Uh, that'll help you out by giving you the times when we post stuff. That's right. <laughs> anyway, so I hope you liked this video. It was uh, really fun with Forrest. I really want to thank him and you know everybody that was there. It was really fun to go visit everybody, and we just love getting together. So. Uh, we wish we filmed a little bit more even, because he has so many amazing animals. But thanks for joining us, and we'll see you soon. I can pick you up, I just feel real bad. I missed it. Are you sure you're ready, ready for it? Oh my goodness. We're all gonna die. That's pretty good. <laughs> oh, there's holes in here. <laughs> My shoes are getting all wet. Better take your shoes off and just jump in. No, no. <laughs> then next time I will. That's the only way he comes out. Oh, yeah, huh? Okay. That makes sense. Wow, that's amazing.